In this video, I'm going to be giving you tips and tricks on how to make more money with Uber Eats. So the first tip is to click on the Opportunities tab and plan to deliver when the trip boost is high. The boost is basically the base pay multiplied by the boost that is being offered, tip not included. Also, it's important to mention that the boost is already applied to the total that you see on the screen, which some people can get confused with. Boost is really good for shopping orders like CVS, Walgreens, and even grocery store orders because the base pay is already generally high and you can get some really high paying orders. Which brings me to my next tip is to get the Uber Eats Plus card. This card is a physical card that you get in the mail and you use it to pay for the customer's groceries during shop and pay orders like the ones that I just showed you. So make sure you sign up for it and activate it in your app. Now let's talk about which orders you should be accepting and the criteria for a good order. I look for orders that are typically around $1.50 per mile, preferably $2 per mile or more. This order is around $3 per mile, so I would accept this. It also needs to have a high payout of $8 or more. Anything under that I would only really do if it was a couple of miles. The second thing I look for is drop off location. It needs to be dropping off in an area that's nearby other restaurants so I could get an order right away. The third thing I look for is the estimated time it will take to complete the order. This is mainly based on the type of road that you'll be driving on, so if it's a highway, it will be quicker and that will reflect in this number. Also, it will take into account traffic, so this can be a really useful tool to further calculate if you should accept the order or not. The last thing I look for is the restaurant itself. It's important to know which restaurants to avoid based on past experiences and which restaurants have long wait times or bad parking and take that into consideration as well. If you had to wait a long time at the same restaurant multiple times before, the chances of you having to wait again is going to be pretty high. I also look to see if it's a nice restaurant as the chances of me getting an extra tip from a nice restaurant are going to be higher than an order from Wendy's. And with double orders, the most underrated thing to look for is to check the map to see if it's from the same restaurant or not. They basically kind of try to trick you and only list one restaurant on the offer screen and once you accept it you'll find out you have to go to two different restaurants. This will obviously take more time as you have to park twice and wait for the order twice. One way to check for this is if there's four total icons on the map it means it's from two different restaurants. If there's three then it means one restaurant and two drop offs so that's how you can tell if it's from the same restaurant or not. I'm not saying to completely avoid these orders if they're from two separate restaurants but it is good to know before you accept an order. Also, this is super important, but always take your first order from your house so you can start right away and always take an order that brings you back home so that your route is as efficient as possible. Save about 20% of your income for taxes and car repair. Now I'm going to give you guys some additional facts that you probably didn't know. When you're dropping an order off and it keeps sending you orders while you're literally looking for the house, just go down into the bottom right, click this button, and then click stop new request. And all you have to do is click go back online after you drop it off. They have good intentions by trying to send you an order before you drop your order off, but it can be very annoying sometimes as it literally blocks the screen when you're trying to take a photo of your drop off. When completing Uber Eats extra pay quests, as long as you start the order before the time cut off, it will still count towards your goal. And always double check the address before you drop the order off because sometimes Apple Maps will bring me to the house next door or across the street and it's really awkward if I have to go back and grab the food again. Now I'm going to be showing you guys an Uber Eats shift that I do and how I apply these things to make more money in real time. Alright guys, so we got our first order. It's $10 for 2 miles, so it's extremely good. We also got an add-on. But this one is only $1 per mile and I can't see the drop off location. So we're gonna decline that. And then we got this order after that one. This one's much better, $6 per mile. And even though I can't see the drop off location, it's only a mile away, so it can't be too far. I got an Uber Eats pickup for Jaden. You have to come inside for that, I'm sorry. I think we could all agree this is the most annoying thing ever when they make you come inside even though the food is already ready. Now we're going to be looking for our next order, declining the bad ones, and only looking for the good ones. We just got this one, $2.61 for 4.9 miles, that's an obvious decline. Next is the shop and pay order, $16.70, this is a pretty decent payout for 12 items though, eh, 4 miles. It could be better, we're gonna decline that. If I got that order at like 1, 2 p.m. when it's slower, I would have taken it, but not during the busy dinner hours. Now we got this $14 for 16 mile order, less than a dollar per mile, and a bad drop off location, easy decline. And now we got this $7.43 order for 2.9 miles. Jersey Mike's is always fast, there's a decent drop off location, there is restaurants near this area, so we're gonna go ahead and accept this one. If you're enjoying this video so far and you want to see more food delivery videos, hit that subscribe button and check out my channel for other videos. Alright guys, for our next order, we had the Uber Eats app open, we weren't really getting anything good, 
So I got this DoorDash order that's really good, around $13 for four miles. That actually brings us to our next tip, is to have all the apps that you can. So you can pick orders from every single app. Uber Eats is usually my number one app, but every once in a while, I'll get a good order from DoorDash or Grubhub, and I'll do that one. I've never done an order from this Pet Supplies Plus. Let's see what happens. I ended up getting this 40 pound bag of dog food, which sucked because I parked really far away. And we are currently sitting at $38.32. So I get this order right here. And another method that I forgot to mention that you could use to evaluate orders is by using the total time estimate to do a calculation to find out the hourly pay for the order. Basically, you divide the total payout, which is $22.05 by 0.67, because every 20 minutes is 0.33 or one third of an hour. Obviously, since this is 40 minutes, we could divide it by 0.67, which is, represents 40 minutes of an hour. So $22.05 divided by 0.67 is $32.91, which tells us that by accepting this order, we are working at a pace of $32.91 an hour, which means this is a good order. So there's a long wait at the restaurant, so it took us about 9 minutes, more than I expected, but we got an $8 pay increase from an extra tip, which is really good. The last two deliveries for this shift were both DoorDash orders, and before I talk about how you could use multiple apps to make more money, I'm going to tell you how much I made for this shift. I made $98.55 in 3 hours for an hourly rate of $32.85. And as you guys saw from that shift, even though Uber Eats is my number one app, there's no reason why you shouldn't sign up for as many delivery apps as possible to maximize profits. Every app that you should try to get is DoorDash, Instacart, Uber Eats, Grubhub, Walmart Spark, Amazon Flex, and Ship. There are some weird apps out there, but these are the main ones. But did you know that you could also do deliveries on the Para app? I'm gonna be walking you guys through an order that I did. I got this $39 order that says it's 0.9 miles. We're definitely gonna accept that. It's probably gonna be a catering order. So basically on the Para app, we hit accept and it told us to download the Cartwheel app, which is another delivering service. And now I received this message saying, are you ready for a delivery? Little do I know that if I do not satisfy this customer, he will literally come to my Minecraft house and blow it up with tea. TNT. Ah. Alright guys, so we just arrived at the restaurant. Let's go inside and see what happens. Now they told me to pull up to the back because it's a lot of items. I then received the order. I didn't have a catering bag, but I was able to fit it into my two dash bags. It actually fit well into my pizza bag, and I'll definitely be purchasing a better bag for my next delivery. Alright guys, so we got paid $39.28 for this delivery. It took us about 45 minutes, which is extremely good. It was 6.4 miles. I thought it was 0.9 miles, but that's just the distance from you to the restaurant. Check the app for the delivery miles to the customer. Alright guys, so hit the subscribe button if you enjoyed this video. If you don't subscribe, then I'm literally going to tell everybody that you know that you play Minecraft.